All right. Here we go. We're live. It's Sunday. Did a little bit of rearranging. What is this? It's my fan. Maybe if I speed up the fan, it'll be less less uh, blinky on the poster. All right. What are we talking about today? No one's really hit me with the question. This is going to drive me nuts. It's like causing everything to blink. Hold on. I got to fix this. This is going to literally drive me insane. There. That'll fix it. It looks a little dark now, but hey, I'll fix that next time. Hamster wheel was turning too fast, causing the light to flicker. You know how it goes. All right. Get set up here. All right. Get your questions in. I want to uh, hopefully have a nice topic at the beginning here. Uh, I've got my uh, trusty aquarium co-op mug that I've been taste testing for a couple of months now. This should should release in the next, I don't know, three to six months. It's a nice big soup kind of, I use it as a broth mug, but, uh, you know. Can we talk about what happened to the heaters? Sure. Uh, we were crushed by our own success, which... Cue the trolls right now. How dare you? Whatever they're going to say. They'll think it's some big conspiracy cover-up. And uh, all that's true because that's all I do. And I have no track record of 10 years online. But let me, let me paint the picture here. So we start manufacturing heaters. No, that's not true. Let's rewind. We start testing heaters years ago. And we're testing, we're testing, we're testing. We eventually find one like, hey, this is the one. This is This is the one. We're going to put our eggs in this basket. We're going to go with it. And we test. We get like 36 of these things. We put them in Dean's fish room, my fish room, Randy's fish room, Zenzo's fish room. And they all test perfect for uh, months, and months and months and months and months and months and months and months. So then we start going to um, production. And we start changing housings and, and things like that. Just flow. And eventually they come out for you guys, right? And at scale, what we see is we start selling. So we used to sell like, like a Fluval heater. So we over the years we sold Fluval heaters, Eheim heaters. Uh, who else? Um, Aquatop, lots of brands. And uh, so through selling all of those, we learned lots of stuff. We want to make it easy. You know, like Eheim makes sense. Like oh, they got such a good reputation. They used to. And now you have all those calibration things and people just can't do it. But besides the point, what happened to our heaters? So we sell heaters and like the Fluval ones, uh, which were more expensive, we were selling like, I don't know, two a day. Let's say it was two a day between the three sizes. And we launched our own heater and pretty soon we're selling a hundred a day. And so we started selling heaters wicked fast. And, you know, we have 120 stores that are also selling them for us as well. So we're selling heaters wicked fast. We start seeing, okay, there's problems every once in a while. Manufacturing defects. Every product, like even mugs. Like one, one of the reasons we're designing this mug is our mug, which has no moving parts, sometimes will have defects, the ones that we don't sell anymore. So we were, we were culling mugs from our own stock. Anyway, so we're tracking it all, and, and we thought we got ahead of the game with all these error codes. And so we thought, okay, every time there's an error... Let's log the code, bring it back to the manufacturer. And our goal was just as long as it didn't stick on. We just didn't want it to stick on uh, and kill a bunch of fish. So we get it. So usually it'll shut itself down, whether it's a temperature probe problem or just there's like six or seven different errors. We log them. We bring it back in each batch. So we're selling tons of them and we're going through them really fast. So each batch we would make an adjustment and an upgrade. And we would track it with things like, you notice the housing changed. You noticed uh, maybe green logos, other stuff, so the customer service could easily uh, identify, like, hey, because a lot of our customers have bought, like, one we refunded just the other day, uh, has bought seven heaters from us. And, uh, but it was over the course of like 17 months. And so if, if a defect was to happen, the customer's not going to remember, well, what month and which order did you buy this one from? So we can go, hey, is this a problem with, let's say, the temperature probe from the new updated probe or from the previous probe? Or this, is it a capacitor problem? Anyway, so we get to a point where we're getting crushed by our own success. We're selling hundreds of heaters, 
and our heater is the 50 watt on average all the way from the very first one till now has a a four percent defect rate and the 100 watt all the way from the first time till this one has a seven well a little bit less than a seven percent defect rate now each batch of heaters the defect rate goes down but in totality seven percent and so maybe you have a heater that is 13 months old and it goes bad and has an error code well you might hop on to the Aquarium Co-op Facebook group and post, hey, I've got a heater, what do? Or maybe your heater is making a crackling sound or just something's happening. Uh, and we say, hey, email us. We'll send you out a new one or refund or whatever you want. And over time, that was happening every day. Because if you have a 7% defect rate and you sell hundreds in a day, well, guess what? That's seven people a day kind of having a problem. Now, we know from our data and talking with our partner stores, 7% is dramatically lower than any other heater that we've ever sold. And our stores were uh, saying the same thing, like, well, what are we going to do now? We only have options with worse failure rates. And the reason why we ended up pulling it was it was bad PR. And we didn't know when. When can we get it to an acceptable rate? In my opinion, it's got to be like one out of 100 maybe even less when you're talking about heating an aquarium. It's an important job. It's a vital piece of equipment. And those iterations and fixes weren't happening fast enough. Now, the numbers were getting better, but we still had an uphill battle to climb, even with the public. We have people trying to, can I put them in deck, inside the decorations? Can I put them in this compartment behind my internal filtration I'm using anymore in this beta tank with no circulation? Can I do all these things that would be detrimental to these heaters? Can I bury it? Can I do this? Can I do that? Hey, I plugged it in, let it sit there, and then it started to fizzle because it got hot, right? So we were also battling that at the same time, and it became apparent to me and my team that it was easier to just go, you know what? Instead of devoting the next 10 years of aquarium co-op to trying to perfect heaters, and I say trying because I can't guarantee we could, why not abandon heaters and focus on things, other things that we know we can get done? Like we want a food line. We want these other things that we're working on, but we're still constantly going back to like, well, let's look at, you know, let's have them send some heaters back. Let's look at them. Let's send them to the manufacturer. Let's try and get it better and better and better and better. And I don't know that we were ever going to get to a point fast enough to where, uh, we wouldn't have the public relation problem. Now, people like Fluval and Eheim and, and other companies, they don't really have that problem because if they have 10 out of 100 go bad, they don't have a centralized point where it's like, oh, we'll all hop on the Aquarium Co-op forum or in the YouTube comments section or the uh, Facebook group. And it doesn't really play that way. It's like, yeah, you just email customer service, they take care of it. And we were, we've taken care of everyone and everyone we've heard of. Some people said, oh, I didn't even bother you guys. And I, we try and track them down and go, hey, what's your name? I want to give your money back. We're not here to make money off of faulty products. We're here to make money off of good products. And I still maintain in our company, when a defect rate goes above 5%, we have to analyze it and either stop selling it or fix it. We had some plants that were going over 5%. We stopped selling them. We hired a plant manager and we went from having losses in shipping and all of that, and we fixed it by putting in a liner into every single plant shipment we send. We have a dedicated plant manager now. We keep less plants on, on hand to help with that a little bit. And now most of our plants are under a fraction of a percent in terms of claims and problems and all of that. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's the cat out of the bag with the heaters. It's, uh, you know... To me, transparency, I am basically, we're asking the right questions right now. Can we recycle $70,000 worth of heaters, our cost? That's not true. It's $37,000 our cost because we have, when you, when you produce things, you have to put down payments. And uh, we had two down payments on, we sell a lot of heaters. So the next two cargo containers we had down payments on. One was 17 k and one was 15 k those that money's not refundable so that's just gone um but i think long long term it uh it's better for the company to just go you know what let's really focus on 
things that we have more control over. Uh, and, and same thing, you guys might have seen like we don't sell the CO2 regulator anymore. Same same issue with that. That was mostly, I, I still can't figure out how to uh, teach people about CO2 without the fear mongering of the internet of you're going to kill everything. And yes, we had, there's manufacturing gremlins in there as well. But the reason we stopped selling it was mostly the two hour lectures we had to give one-on-one -on -one with people that would buy these systems that are really new to aquariums and they're like i bought a plant and i have a light and i have a co2 thing what do and uh so i think it's you know our brand is based on let's let's help newer people become more established in the hobby and the easy line and that didn't really line up with that so before we get too much further i know that I have a special guest watching today, and that would be Sam. It's his birthday. It was his birthday party today. I was supposed to go to that party, but he woke up with uh, a tummy ache and not feeling good. Had to cancel his whole seventh birthday party. So I want to give a shout out. Happy birthday, Sam. He uh, he loves the fact that he knows a YouTuber, and so I thought I'd give him a shout out today. And uh, you know, can't do that for everybody, but I can. I can get it done every once in a while with that shout out. Uh, let's see here. What else? What other band aids can I rip off at the same time? We got rid of the scratch and dent program for the members only. That was creating inventory nightmares. Um, we, our plan is to bring that back kind of once a year and make it more like a, for lack of a better term, like an REI event where they do like a sidewalk sale or an online sale where. You know, we pick a, a slow time and we go, okay, let's inventory everything we got. Let's get it, you know, ready to sell and do it instead of uh, people just constantly like, when are you going to, when are you going to have another one of these damaged so I can buy one? Like, I don't know. Watch the website. Um, yeah. <laughs> June 21st, I expect a birthday shout out. Oh, don't worry. I'm adding to the calendar right now. All right. Let me pop out the chat here. Pop out chat. I want to look at... Looking for it. Do, do, do. Iron Eagle Forge needs some help. I will do my best. I will look for you in the chat. You've spent $20, and uh, that, is, that is what I can, I can say I can try. Let me, I'm taking a quick scroll here. Five memberships from Emily. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, Candy will spot it and she can uh, messenger it to me or something if we see that down the road here. <laughs> I'd still want one. I'd sign an NDA not to complain about whatever goes down. There, there, There's actually kind of a lot of customers that do feel that way and stores that feel that way too and it's uh we we don't do that just because it creates even more tension with the fans why can they go in and i can and you know it, it almost makes, spins it into a bigger uh a bigger problem even more so of just like ah oh, geez now we got people fighting over um you know so we, we did let the stores they can continue to sell um the ones they have or we refunded them all either way Stefan asked, was the 50 watt heater a better performer in terms of defect rate? It was. Uh, so, you know, you add electricity, heat, and water together, and then the human brain, and things go wrong. And so the less heat, basically, the less electricity, the easier it was on the internals. And so, yeah, it was almost a half, half a percent. And our manufacturer was telling us, like, well, if you can convince people to buy 90 watt heaters, we think it'll reduce by this much. And I just don't think that is a, a worthy thing of our time to um, to try and convince the internet. Like, no, nah, you don't want 100 watt heaters. You want 90 watt heaters. Because we already have people like, I need 400 watts. Like, no, you need a glass top. You need, you need tops on your aquariums. That's what you need. All right. Let's see here. Iron Eagle, he's got three tanks, 
and he wants to get rid of. Back in October, my wife passed away, and I no longer have time to play with the tanks now. Uh, I'm all alone to clean, shop, and cook for the three kids. Well, that's that's a bummer of a story. I'm sorry to hear that. There might be some more coming to that story. Um, maybe you're asking how to how to decommission them and, and kind of find them right homes, or um, yeah, we'll wait for more to chime in. Otherwise, I'll double back in a while and and talk about it some more. Will heaters and regulars be in my store? Nope. We kind of do this all or nothing thing. We don't want to play favorites. It's not fair to the stores to like not sell it, then sell it, all those types of things. Um, <laughs> it's got some cool pictures of Sam losing his mind from the happy birthday shout out. So that's pretty, pretty cute. Um, <laughs> all right. Would love to talk about planted goldfish tanks. Uh, yeah, things like Anubias, Crinums. If you watch some of the tanks I've done in the past, especially way back, did a lot more with goldfish. Crinums worked really well. Uh, African fern, Balbitis, Anubias. I actually think you could do crypts and that kind of stuff. Use some bigger stones. That I find key is like plant the plant, put stones around it so that they can't just go and pick the gravel near it. Um, they make a lot of good poop, so that's a lot of fertilizer. I still fertilize on top of that, but uh, yeah, I, I'm i a big fan of that. I'm, I'm actually thinking about, I'm on the fence of setting up uh, setting up a, a goldfish tank myself, so. Oh, I thought of another Band-Aid I can rip off at the same time. Uh, Murphy's getting old, it's going to die eventually. <laughs> and I laugh about, about that because it hurts, but... Uh, for the last over a year, he's been going more and more blind and, uh, harder and harder to feed him with tongs and, and all of that. And right now I think he's got a little bit of a, a lesion. So the, the staff were taking out all the plants, all the gravel, all the decoration. We're going to up the salt levels. Our goal is to, uh, I'm going to call it like hospice care, you know, basically, Get them as healed up and as much as we can. We're going to move them out of the store to uh, the employee break room. And the hope is that maybe a move slash uh, less, less, you know, human slash kids going, yeah, dance monkey and hitting the tank and that kind of stuff. Um, maybe he'll mellow out. I mean, it's pretty chill right now, but um, we're going to move over there, see how he does. And he's just it's hard to get him to eat. And he's he's old. He's old for a fish. You know, I think he's, I got to look it up because people keep asking me. I go, well, I got to look back on, like, when's the first video? That I can't remember. I think he's like eight or more, though. Uh, and Ladybird is similar age, but doesn't have the blindness or anything like that going on. So uh, I think we're going to do some musical chairs and we will um, move Ladybird to the big 1500 gallon tank. I think long term we might move Elmer to the 360 gallon tank so that more people can enjoy Elmer in person. Um, we've considered moving Murphy back to my home, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense when I've got to travel and stuff. So I think in the employee break room, we set up a tank. We've got full on staff there and we'll see if there's any, uh, any improvements in it's I don't think there's gonna be a lot. He's, he's blind, it's hard for him to find food. You know, we've tried lots of foods. He won't eat snails or filler crabs or anything we put in there anymore. He doesn't hunt. Um, yeah, and and like all animals, he can have something going on with him. You know, you can have two dogs, they're born, born the same day, and yet, well, one's not doing so hot. He's got something going on. And so, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna try some stuff. And so you might see like, oh, the puffer cam's gone or something. It's like, well, there's nothing to show right now. Dan, donating 10 memberships. Well, thanks, buddy. How do I get my coins? Says Atkins Nature Aquariums. Uh, you got to place orders. So this is going to sound convoluted, I know. You got to place an order. And then, well, okay, let me back up. You have to sync your account first. If you haven't done that, you go to the website and you sync your YouTube account. Then you have to place an order. It'll run all these background scripts. And it'll go, oh, he's supposed to get... Uh, membership coin one and two. Then the next time you place an order, it'll actually add those on 
to uh, your order. So unfortunately, there's no way that we can have it run before, like real time with the, the order. It just doesn't, our system can't do it. Um, in fact, there's even talk that come August, unless we can figure out a different way, like even that system could break. You know, our platform, which is Shopify, they're always improving things. And, uh, you know, sometimes that breaks stuff we can do. So we're, we've got our, our coders working on it, like, well, how are we going to get around that? You know, and uh, we're also looking into how do we give out coins easily at the store? So that we're working on that too. Am I looking to go to Aquashell this year? No, I've got, I've actually got giant projects this year that are still secret, so I can't share yet, but uh, no. Uh, also, during one of the Aquashells, I think we're going to go to uh, tour the country and visit stores and uh, film stuff in the wild. Can you remove caves to help reduce bristlenose breeding? You can, but bristlenose that really want to really want to breed, sometimes they'll just lay clusters of eggs right out in the open, especially if there's any underhangs of wood. Um, splitting them up obviously would work, but uh, you know my advice would be if you don't want more babies, you're just trying to reduce. I realize there's a difference between none and less. You could sell that pair to someone who really wants to breed them. You'll make their day. They become the, you know, the Pleco Breedo, Breedo, Pleco Breeder Whisperer. They'll have a super amount of fun. Their whole family will get involved. They'll unload them on fish stores and all of that. And you can just keep some of your babies and grow them out. You know, that's what we do at the store a lot of times. Good beginner tips for keeping cherry shrimps. My tip that I will always give is start with them in a tank that is their own, fully planted, get some snails in there, and just feed food every day. Just feed some food. And eventually, if you have males and females, you are very likely to make more. Now, some people will go, well, what about pH? What about temperature? What about... I'm telling you. I bred these things in super hard, high pH water. Bred them in super low. I've overwintered them with inches of ice outside. I've had them when it's 100 degrees outside. These things are like aquatic cockroaches. They kind of just make more. In fact, Greg Sage has a problem where they've infested all of his aquariums to his detriment. He doesn't want that many in there eating uh, food and that kind of stuff. And so mostly what I find is people want to create an aquarium and they keep adding things like, oh, I'm going to add this fish and this and that. And uh, baby shrimplets make great fish snacks. So when I very first did it, shrimp as a hobby was pretty new. I remember I paid big money for them. Uh, I had to ship them in off Aquabid. And I remember I set them up in an aquarium on my desk. Didn't do any water changes, just kept feeding them and plants. Then I made more, and then I made more. And then as I made more, I go, well, now I can, I can experiment. Like, oh, that fish just ate it. That ain't going to work. And I would do that more and more and more. And that's how I found out they can live under inches of ice and they can go really hot and really cold. I also had an experiment in a big 30-gallon bowl upstairs in a spare bedroom that we would have guests in. Uh, they can go 10 months without being fed or light. So, you know, kind of just testing this kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, so that's that's my tip is just, just feed them and keep them alone and see how obviously cycled aquarium and by cycle, that most means season. You've got some algae in there. You've got bacteria in there. You've got plants growing. you got a light on a timer. All of that will pay dividends for you. Uh, let's see here. Any chance you can discontinue the 100 watt and keep the 50 watt? Nope. Because already people go, you make a 100 watt. Can you make a 200 watt, 300 watt, 400 watt, 500 watt, 700 watt? And then that'll just be the same thing. Hey, you make a 50 watt. Can you make a 100 watt, 200 watt, 300 watt, 400 watt, 500 watt? Still 4% is too high. I need to get sub 1%, and I don't want to dedicate the rest of my life to that. Some people would say, but you should. That would change the hobby, and I would say, you're right. But you need passion and expertise, and I don't have passion to spend the rest of my life working on heaters. I just don't. I just know I don't. So if someone else can. I hope they do. We'll, be, we'll line up to sell them for them. Uh, let's see here.
Have I ever been to the Georgia Aquarium? I haven't. Never been to Georgia, in fact. Any plans on another trip to Peru? Wait, another collecting trip. Peru again, or maybe somewhere else? We are talking about uh, potentially Papua New Guinea. There's there's other, we won't really want to go to Brazil. We've got a, a good in there as well. Uh, I think the next collecting trip, not so much collecting to bring home, but to document, is going to be uh, throughout the United States. Rainbow shiners, darters, crayfish. I travel the world, go look at these fish, and we have a lot of cool fish in our backyards. And uh, why not take advantage of that, is my my thinking. Any plans to do a different selection of different sized fry food? Kind of. We're working on foods. Um, <coughs> you've seen some posts about flake food. I've been trialing some pellet foods. I've been working on foods for like five years. And it's a tough nut to crack because it takes a long time to get uh, batches made and make tweaks and and all of that. But we're getting closer and closer, I think. Um, like working on some bloodworms right now, we're comparing different manufacturers' bloodworms. In fact, um, it's you know the the heater thing and and the CO two regulators. It really forced me to go. Okay, what do I want to focus on? Like, what do I really want to get right? I mean, I, you want. You, you think, I want to get everything right. And we've had so many home runs. And then you go, okay, well, and we knew heaters before we ever launched heaters. We knew, like, this is, like, nearly an impossible task. Like, it's so hard to quality check something that fails somewhere between the next one and five years at scale, right? And so we kind of knew that it was going to be that way. All right. Um, should we as fish keepers now worry so much about beneficial bacteria in our filters and more so on the substrate rocks and glass? I think that's a true statement. Uh, I think, well, everybody does aquatics different. So, but if I was trying to teach someone, I, I think I would tell them, think of your filter as mostly... A garbage can is going to collect debris for you. It does other things too, for sure. But that's the role we really need it to be doing for most of us. Because plants and the bacteria that will grow basically on everything that's wet in your aquarium will kind of handle the biological part. And your filter's wet also, so it will also be biological. Um, you know, but a filter also does... Uh, what do I want to say? I want to... Oh, I, I can turn the... The fan back up now that, that light's on. It's starting to sweat. Uh, the the filter also creates some circulation, which I think is important. And so, I would say, seasoned tanks or well established tanks are much more beneficial than, um, than just having a, a cycled filter. But there there are there are times when you want to take a cycled filter and in a pinch move it over to a tank that might be struggling or just getting set up or so it's not that the term shouldn't exist it's it's that uh, a better understanding of what really just a cycled filter or ba beneficial bacteria means and I th I think that's a lot of the the problem in the hobby in general is. Uh, and I'll, I'll say I'm 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 in this group. So every everybody I think for the most part, we learn a lot about a wide variety of aquatic stuff. But a lot of us don't go deep in that subject, and so even if you just go in like a little bit deeper than most people, now you're an expert in that field. When you know a true expert or something is like, oh, I've been working on it for forty years. I they, they actually become an expert. Uh, so just cause I do a lot of libraries for the last 20 years, like that's, you know, that and puffers and African cichlids and uh, like using sponge filters. These are things I've been doing for like 20 years, which is a long time in comparison to a lot of people. Uh, and I tend to know more about that, but that doesn't make me an expert on those subjects. And I think we as hobbyists, we fall into a little bit of false, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Like security of just like. Hey, I kept that fish and I did really well. So therefore, I'm pretty much a wizard at it. You know, it, I, we might see it in real life of like, driven for 10 years, never got an accident. 
I'm pretty much the best driver there is. And there's a lot of it to where you can be that person and the next year you get in two accidents. You didn't change the way you drive at all. Like there's just circumstances and, and all of that. So I I think that we could do a lot more to go more in depth into uh into aquatics and, and different subjects. Like I'm I'm actually focusing right now. I'm getting I'm I'm getting pretty nerdy on snails. I ordered some uh some white wizard snails and I got some blueberry snails this week. Both another live bearing type of snail that I'm super geeked to work with. Um but I I see that there's just clearly different levels of expertise when it comes to things and you know you can have people that are very good in the hobby but um you know i see some people propped up of like this person really knows shrimp and it's like they they know a decent amount about shrimp but what about compared to like shrimp sanctuary in here that travels the world and interviews people and has two different shrimp reading rooms and and things like that versus someone who's like just on youtube about shrimp like they all know a lot but there's different levels to it and I think that I am not that deep on most of the levels just because I, I have to be a generalist of, uh, you know, I, I, I try to focus on how do I help people go from being a fish, like I own a fish, a pet fish, to becoming a hobbyist. That's my main goal is making that transition, making it easier. Um, maybe you saw my Facebook. If you guys aren't following me personally, you can. Corey McElroy on, fa- on Facebook. I do a lot of, not a lot, I don't know about a lot, but I update there outside of all this other stuff I do. And I posted a video about just trying to show people that you can have your plants purling with high light and fertilizer and a sponge filter going with no CO2 injection. We've done videos on it in the past, but you know, there's always so much, uh, there's always so much pushback from conventional wisdom. You know, we saw it. I think it was in the comments or something last week where we talked about air stones, like the bubbles physically add oxygen and CO2 to the water. And people are like, no, they don't like your cancer filter surface attitude does more. And a guy that chimed in, he goes, well, you know, as a, someone who focuses on brewing at mass scale, it's very important and it, it does work. And I'm not the scientist to be able to explain it to you. I can just go, I own the meter. I did the thing, it did it, you know, that's, that's as good as I'm ever going to get. And so it helps when you do have someone that's like, I do this all day long and here's why it's working. He can can explain it to people where I can just go, I can't explain, I can't argue all day long on why it's working because I don't have that knowledge, but I can show you that, but it is working that way in practice for me. Okie doke. I have issues keeping the dual air pump from working on more than three air stones. Yeah, this is, uh, this should be like a 10 hour documentary on teaching people how to use air pumps. Air pumps, they have a certain output pressure, right? So think of it as like they're blowing air at a certain amount. Everything from that air pump on adds resistance. So each check valve will add resistance. The length of tubing will add resistance. The depth of the water will add resistance. The device at the end of the tube, is it a sponge filter, is it an air stone, any of that will add resistance. The device at the end of that tube, over time, gets clogged with dust particles or tar if you're a a cigarette smoker or vapor or uh, calcium deposits if you have super hard water. All of these things will affect how well uh, an air pump runs. And on top of all of that, if you have an outlet, you're trying to split twice. The difference in pressure between the two now adds another layer of complication. So that's why you use the little valves to adjust the amount of flow. But even that, like, well, how how much tubing, how many check valves, how many devices, how deep are the aquariums? All of those things are going to play in. And then we're the juxtapose of that is so we're balancing all of that against what the public wants and they want it cheaper, they want it uh quieter, and they want the battery to last longer, right? And so we can solve any of those problems. Those problems are solvable. 
hey, we can make it last longer on a battery. Make a bigger battery. FYI, that's actually happening. And in the next like year, we'll have bigger batteries in there. Uh, we want more power. Great. We could juice it up. Let's let's add another watt of power to it. And then people go, it's louder. Well, yeah, <laughs> you're running, you're running more wattage. Uh, so you know, we're in testing. We actually have some pumps being made to be made slightly more powerful, but at what cost in terms of how long the battery is going to last and how loud is it going to be? Because we don't we don't need a chainsaw, right? We need something that is tolerable and easy to manage noise-wise while producing the optimal amount of air while also providing a good battery backup and then also still being affordable. So we have to balance all of those things. And uh, the first thing I would say is like, we have a two outlet air pump. We recommend running two outlets. And you might say, well, I, I bought the Whisper 100 and I can run five outlets. And then I go, yes, you can. Takes more power and doesn't have a battery backup. Different device. Uh, so those are all the things that go in there to, uh, you know, a factor on whether you're going to like an air pump or not. There is also the, there's the human element of one person hears their air pump and like, what is that sound? How could you live here? And the next person literally can't hear it. So different frequencies for different human ears act differently. Uh, let's see here. I'm falling behind the chat. New apartment allows me to have aquariums. I'm setting up a 40 breeder behind my desk and a 29 in the bedroom. You're going to ship fish for the first time. Well, good luck with that. Shipping fish is nerve wracking. It's, I don't mind shipping fish to myself or like a friend, but anytime there's money being exchanged, there's expectations and which might seem weird. Like obviously I'm going to try my hardest with for the fish's lives, but like when a fish, if they don't make it, that sucks. And it's a bummer. But if they don't make it and someone's losing their mind and issuing a charge back and screening your reputation, that's just 10 times worse. So that's why we don't really ship. But uh, shipping to myself, not so much a problem. And shipping to friends, not so much a problem because they know like, ah, stuff kind of happens. Apart from Infusoria, are there any live food? Co Wait. Any live foods one could culture from local bodies of water in North America? Are detritus worms able to be cultured? Yeah. Uh, you could culture black worms, basically mosquito larvae, uh, red worms, um, seed shrimp, daphnia. I know there's more off the top of my head, but I can't think of them. So, lots. How would I suggest paring down hundreds of fish and around 20 ish aquariums? I need to pare down and maybe 175 gallon. Well, I, you know, one, one sock at a time. That's how you put your socks on. I would probably start setting up a 75 gallon somewhere and I would start from the fish I like the least. Or, or worth the most money, or some logic where I would um, start getting rid of them. I've had to do it for moves and stuff like that. Like, well, okay, these guys are next to go. And then you kind of work on that for a week or two. And then, okay, these guys are next to go. And you keep working through that. And eventually, you might find yourself like, oh, you're down to four aquariums. You're like, this is actually completely, totally manageable. Maybe, I, maybe I'm fine. Um, and you'll be left with the four tanks of fish you like the most. So I would, I would go that way. It's not really, I don't recommend the, the blitz strategy. I've watched that play out horribly lots where it's like, I got to move. And so all my fish are going on Saturday. People are coming. It's going to be chaos. And uh, I don't feel like that works out too well for the fish. A lot of times. I'm trying to catch up on the member chats. So I apologize. Regarding my video with Chris Lukup and collecting in Germany, why are crayfish so invasive and harmful to established ecosystems? Uh, in general, a lot of crayfish will eat whatever they can put their claws on. So snails, shrimps, plants, eggs of fish, all of that. And specifically the markreb 
that crayfish we found, it's the self-cloning one. So it doesn't even need a mate. It just like every 60 days, it's like, hey, here's 60 more of me. And so it just kind of expands and expands and expands. And they do eat plants and snails and baby fish and eggs and all of that. And so over time, they can hit this critical mass that is just devastating to a waterway. Now, that waterway is uh, artificial and heated and all of that anyway. So you could argue like, but it's already weird. Where that same crayfish uh, put into a natural waterway, like where I live, like, oh, decimated all the salmon. Like, well, that's terrible. Uh, crayfish also are pretty adaptive to hot and cold water. And they can, they're just, they're lower on that totem pole. And they can really survive a lot of opposition in terms of water parameters and all that. And so they can just do a lot of damage. And there's no real good, easy way to eliminate them without having problems eliminating other stuff. You could be like, well, what about copper? You can kill copper. Yeah, and all the snails and all invertebrates and shrimp and, and all that kind of stuff too. And so it's just hard to, well, these need to go. 28 months. It's been a while, Planet Goldies. Planet Goldies. Uh, ready for summer. About to unload a hundred stirby quarries in my area. How do you breed quarries in mass scale? Have I done it? Not in mass. I mean, what is you know what's mass? A hundred normal clutch for a lot of species of corridoras, but in you know I know how they're done at farms and what the farms they usually use like three hundred gallon totes or or cement basins, three hundred gallons of water. You get a buttload of females, usually like two females to every male. And uh, you take, well, what they do is they take lids of styrofoam containers like shipping boxes. And they put all these mops hanging off of it. And they basically soak them in there for like a week. And then they move that to an empty 300 gallon. They put another one in there. And they just keep breeding and breeding and breeding. And those eggs keep hatching, hatching, hatching. And you're going, yep, we're raising a thousand, you know, a thousand eggs a week off of this one group of fish. And so then you're just rearing tons and tons and tons. So you can you can kind of let that get as out of control as you want it to, uh, knowing that you gotta heat them all, you gotta clean them all, you gotta feed them all, you gotta, you know, pay attention to them. And so if you have a if you have a big family or a team of people willing to make that happen, you can be the next Corydora farmer. Otherwise, usually you lose out to other countries that have like free heating because it's hot there. Uh, labor might be cheaper. They might have uh, local food sources, you know, like, oh, yeah, like Daphne just down the road. Uh, stuff like that can really help uh, mitigate the costs of raising fish. So, you know, you may or may not have those advantages. Where can you find the highway catfish? I don't even know if I know that fish. I gotta, I gotta type in the uh, scientific name, huh? T a c h y s u r u s trilineatus. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's a, it looks like a woodcat species. And what was the question? Where can you get them? Uh, I'm not used to buying rare fish. Watching Dan's fish, see if he's got any. Uh, I'd also check out the wet spot tropical fish. Um, those are the main two that I would watch if I'm looking for something rare. But otherwise, I just, honestly, I Google it like every month. When I'm looking for a rare fish, I just Google the name of the fish for sale. And that's sometimes how you find, you know, some uncolored up cypachromus from rarefish.com. But other times it works out well. Am I going to visit Goliad Farms again? I sure hope so. I haven't been there in a long time, and I like Charles, and I like what he's doing. A follow-up, uh, let's see here, from Iron Eagle Forge. Three tanks, one's a 75, one's a 20 long, and one's a 38 bow front. Free to good homes located in New Jersey. Uh, my best advice Iron Eagle Forge. I mean, normally I'm not uh, a big proponent of helping people relocate and, and and sell stuff, and you know. But you had you had your wife pass away here. You could post on uh, on our forum 
So you go to accordioncoop.com, you scroll to the bottom of the page, find the link to the forum. Uh, or if you're on mobile, you'll see it in the, the mobile menu. And you could post there and find somebody uh, in New Jersey. Now, especially, a lot of people don't know this, actually. We have a whole uh, kind of buying, trading, and selling forum on that forum. Now, you can only see it, though, after you've made 50 posts. So you have to actually be a member of that community. Now, you're not allowed to set up shop. You're not allowed to be a commercial entity. But if you, you know, if you're planted goldies and you've got 100 stir by quarries that need a home, you can post them up on there. You could learn to ship. You can trade with others. You can do all that so long as it's not setting up shop. We're not, you know, our goal is not to uh, undermine our store or our partner stores or anything like that. But we do realize as hobbyists, if we've done everything right, we make more fish on accident. And sometimes we can't feed them all. They got to get homes. And so as long as that's the spirit of it, that I am totally down with. It's when people start getting weird and they're they're setting up shop and they're getting, you know, guarding their customers on there. Like, that's not what this is about. It's not, not paying moderators and, and hosting software and all of that so that you can run a store off of our money. It's so that one hobbyist can find another hobbyist and go, oh, you've got the snail I want? Great. You've got a fish I want? Let's trade. That's what we're hoping to do. All right. Still bagging on sips. That's why I can't sell any. Oh, I love Cipachromas. You got some nice uh, leptosomas or anything like that? Hit me up. I'll buy them. I, I'm. I mean, they are color. They're slightly coloring up. Like one of those things that, like, if I if I squint and I look from across the room, like, oh, maybe 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 those are gonna maybe they'll maybe they're doing some. And then I go to feed them. Like, nah, these things kind of still suck. And then like, well, I, well, hold on, hold on. It's been like, another, maybe if I give them like another 10 years, these things will be worth looking at. So at some point I'll, I'll find some sips where I'm like, Ooh, those look amazing. I want those now. And I'll just swap them out. But until that day, they'll just be fed like Kings and, uh, enjoy, you know, I've got six fish in a 125 gallon tank, love and life. So yeah, let them love, let them love it. Band is a good uh, place to find rare fish or any fish. I don't know. I honestly have never used Band app. So I know a lot of people sell fish and do things on there. I just have zero inclination on how good or trustworthy. I mean, I know like John Oliver sells on there and I trust that guy and I love his guppies, but I don't know, you know, to me, it would be like, you know, Craigslist. Like, well, yeah, with Craigslist, you could have legit people and knowledge of people. How are you going to know? I have no idea the inner workings of Band app. So can't can't really advise you there good night watermans 1 50 a.m in the uk well sleep well okie dokie i always heard you love coolie loaches yes do i have any plans of thousands in a large tank no uh so i do a lot of so a lot of the way i keep fish there are things that i totally want to do and then I think through them and I go, well, how likely am I to look stupid on camera? What are the odds? So for instance, when let's say we're going to move Elmer to a 360 gallon tank. Well, what fish are you going to put with Elmer? Well, we could put neons. Like what if I get neon tetra disease? That's really hard to cure. I pretty much have never done it. I'm going to look real stupid on camera. Well, not them. Okay. What about guppies? Guppies are really easy to breed, but like, yeah, what if some fungal infection or or fin rot starts going? And then if they're at the store, people are gonna follow with that guppy. We've had people offer us a hundred dollars for one guppy, but it's impossible to catch out of there. Yeah, maybe not them either. Like, okay, what about like shabunk and goldfish? That'd be cool. Like, yeah, but what if they take all the food from Elmer? Okay, what about a thousand coolie loaches? Like That'd be neat, but then it only takes, like, what if two coolie loaches get ick and then it starts spreading? Like, well, that's not good either. And so, 1,000 coolie loaches sounds awesome. Will I do it? No, because my odds of uh, something going wrong on camera and just, you know, the trolls being like, see, you dumb, uh, pretty high. I mean, I already have, like, pretty elevated skill of that, of just like, Corey, you dumb and your tank's bad. I know, I know. Uh, but I enjoy them. 
you know, so that's, that's, you got to balance that what you're enjoying and trying to teach and show things versus, uh, what the internet will basically tolerate. Have I ever kept a flower horn? Uh, mostly only in a store, a little bit at home. Uh, but no, I haven't really kept flower horns. I kept some dovi. I do like some aggressive fish sometimes. Do any of the discus breeders you met in Europe ship to the U.S.? Yes. Uh, the In fact, I've got some posters right over here. Let's see if he's got his name on it. At some point, I was kind of maybe saving these if I do a million live stream extravaganza or something, but I did get some signed posters, and you'll see the video of this discus breeder. Um, some really cool. Okay, I'm just going to make a mess of posters here. These are like kind of crazy expensive posters that he had made. He usually sells them, but he gave us some to give away. Do you have his name on here? They took all the pictures. Uh, I think it's Europa Discus is his business name. And they're all signed. You see they're signed right here. Oh, yep, like right here. Uh, and so I'll find a way to give some of these away. And uh, Chris got some to give away on his channel as well. But Europa Discus ships worldwide. I'm sure there's a bunch of other places. I just don't, I don't know them well enough. And his fish were legit, and he really seemed like he was new. He knew what he was doing. That being said, I'm not the biggest discus guy. So, but a lot of discus people geek out about that guy. So that's usually a sign of like, oh, which guy might know a thing or two about discus. And then I have this. This is the whole reason I brought, uh, brought a poster tube thing to bring back posters. I've been trying to bring posters back for like four years from Chris Luca. My favorite poster he's ever done, uh, I found sitting in the corner of his fish room. And it's the B Different poster. And uh, just has the one shrimp going the other way, being different. And it's back when uh, he referred to himself as the Crusta Hunter. So this copyrights from 2015, I guess. But really fell in love with this poster and so I had to bring one back and that's that's actually the poster I hung up on the wall back there and I've got one more that I don't know I might go in the fish room might give it away not quite sure I just I really love this poster I just thought it looks vintage even though it's not it's it's just made that way I just I thought the the style was really cool um oh come on posters I've also got some smaller versions of the posters too so and they're also signed. So we'll kind of wait for that video to come out. And then, you know, maybe I'll give these posters away. I say maybe because it's a lot of work to put, tell customer service. Like, you're going to have 11 people contact you all claiming that uh, they've won. And you got to, like, cycle through them. We've got ways to identify who's lying to us. Dean just said he wants one of those posters. So maybe Dean will get one. Uh, yeah, so yeah, he does ship to worldwide. I'm sure it's not cheap, but uh, you know, when you're trying to get cool stuff, it never is. I know that uh, some people have been, I've been advertising. <laughs> Got them. Been advertising on Facebook the air pumps and the uh, sponge filters with the uplift tube. And there's been some mm, drama. And the drama is there are people that don't want to buy the extension tube because it costs more money. And there's people that just have no idea what it does. And then there's people that absolutely love it, which is me. So basically, I don't, you know, if I was good at my job, I hear like I, I've got, I've got a sponge filter. I just don't have the, the kit. I've been so busy and I have a live stream really a lot. So you got your, your basic sponge filter here. Well, basic, our basic sponge filter. Get in there. Okay. So you got your basic sponge filter here, and this is what it used to be. Well, not with a crooked tube, but... And we'd recommend you put a, a air stone in there, and the air stones could clog, and then you had to put the airline tubing through here, which took up some of the upflow. By changing it to an air collar, which you just got to pretend it's an air collar that's on our website right now and you could look at, you put that... Up top here, you eliminate the problem some people get of air bubbles coming out the side of this thing. No longer an issue. Solved it. Customer service happy. Right? But by taking the tube 
the airline tube, and now it's on the outside. It's not on the inside anymore. You can have more flow going. And the unique or the uniform air pattern from that collar, all rising up uniformly, moves a lot more water. Now, the kit is also extendable and shorting. You can shorten it too. And then it's got this nice, slow 57.25 curve. I tested multiple angles for the curve so that the air will come up and not just hit a 90 degree and be like, and then move. It rolls out and it'll create a nice current in your aquarium. Now, if you have a linear air piston pump, it's like a power head. If you have our battery air powered pump, it's like, oh, it's a nice gentle current. In fact, I hooked one up today on my... My mollies, I forgot to turn it down. So tonight or tomorrow, I got to go turn that down because they were like, whoa, it's crazy in here. Uh, now, some problems people run into is they go, but Curry, I got a two and a half gallon tank. The thing's too big, too tall. Yeah, that's two and a half gallon tanks are rough. You can take the Nano and cut the Nano. So the way the Nano actually works, it's like all the other sponge filters that people don't know. Uh, this part can come off. What? You could make this a little shorty. Corey, that looks awfully familiar. Like maybe it's your small. Hmm. So you can always cut a sponge in half, make it smaller. And the Nano, you can do that also. Make a real shorty. But I advise a small one. And then there's a video on the kit, which Candy at Customer Service remind our online team, we need to double that video over to the actual sponge filter side. It shows you how to cut, which pieces to cut down to make them shorter for things like two and a halfs and five and a halfs and 10 gallon tanks. Um, so that's, you know, that'll help you there. It also, one of the biggest benefits that I always forget to tell people, instead of sponge filters like glug, 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 glug and being loud, they're dang near silent when you have a uniform flow because it's not glug, glug, glug anymore. It's just nice flow and it rolls out. So there's no big splash at the top. It just goes so uh yeah but the price increased and as i would do as everyone has everyone's comparing new price to old price and the reality was we were going to up the price with or without the upgrade uh because shipping keeps going through the roof and sponge filters like you wouldn't know it this thing cost me 13 bucks to ship to you you're like but you were selling for $10. Like, yep, we lost uh, $3 on every one you, you bought. Now, that's not entirely true because you bought this and this. Well, these also cost $13 a ship for both. Then we would make money. So if you buy just one, we lost money. Um, but as negotiations go on for USPS and UPS and all of that, uh, and wars, like cargo containers are more expensive kind of right now. And then, uh, you know, like UPS, people got a 5% raise. Wow, that's great. Everyone's making more money. And then they, you know, like in the same breath go, and uh, cost went up 5% to you, according to Cloud. Okie doke. Uh, and we did not pass that cost on to you guys. Well, we do in the in the, the cost of the product, right? Uh, we tried. We tried. We literally tried. And uh, we raised our shipping price, and we raised our uh, our free shipping threshold. So we went to 100 for free shipping. And uh, and we raised it from seven ninety nine to nine ninety nine, and twenty five percent of you said, you know what, I just won't buy from you guys anymore. And we go okay, so we lowered the price and increased the the price of the product, and then everybody came back. We're so used to as a consumer to be like shipping free, even though we we spend over two million dollars a year on shipping, uh, so it's not free, very much not free. But we know we have to roll it into the cost because people like, and, and there's lots of tests in e-commerce where it's like, okay, what if I offer this product for $10 and, uh, and $10 shipping? It'll sell at X rate. What if I offer this for $25 and free shipping? It'll sell like 25% more because people would just not, they, they don't want to pay shipping even if it's more expensive. So, um... I tried to kind of, you know, there's a kind of a movement building on the back end e-commerce of like, but we could save customers money if they just pay what they need to pay instead of us having to build these worst case scenarios. Um, and that's really 
in our in our realm will show itself in things like uh, gravel and that kind of stuff. It's like, well, they're going to get free shipping. We have to inflate the price of gravel. That's kind of how you get to things like ADA soils being $70 a bag. Like it's not, it doesn't cost $70 to produce. It's the shipping of a 20 pound bag of substrate. In addition, they qualify for free shipping and order plants and this and that. And so, you know, at the end of the day, we're not getting rich off the sponge filters. Like we're making money. Okay. And people, you know, people get to come into work, they get paid and they get to live a life. Um, but there's, you know, if, if there was a way we could, we could save more and make it more efficient, we will do it. And, uh, you know, one of the ways is not carrying multiple, multiple SKUs. And so our sponge filters will only have the lift kit in the future, but to round that out, it wouldn't have been compared. So like, let's say our, our, this thing might've, I think it was 1099. I think maybe it's 999. I can't remember at this point. Um, <clears throat> It would have had to go up like two or three bucks anyway, just from shipping. Now you'd be like, you said it only went five percent. We didn't up any of our prices like all through COVID, pretty much. Uh, for that adjusted inflation slash shipping kept going up through the roof. Uh, we didn't gouge people when cargo containers at their lowest are three thousand dollars to ship. At the height of COVID, twenty two thousand. We didn't change the price. Um, so we were catching up from spending all the time kind of trying to develop and, and just keep the business afloat to go, okay, we literally are losing money on these shipments. How do we, um, how do we fix that? So we did. And so that's why you won't most likely will not see offering both. I'm not saying we never would, but it seems unlikely at this point, unless we see um, an opportunity in the market or shipping changes or I don't know something. Have I ever had Vegemite? I have had Vegemite, keeping fish simple. I am not a fan, although it was like 20 years ago. So maybe maybe now that I'm an old man, maybe uh, I will enjoy that stinky version of like, well, Vegemite, so I, I, I have to be clear. I always mix up Vegemite and what is it, Marmite? Mar Maramite? Hold on. Marmite? What is that? Marmite? Yeah, Marmite. So I always mix those up, but I'm pretty sure I don't like either of them. I think Vegemite is more like Australian and Marmite is more British. Either way, kind of on the, eh, I don't know about those. They're a little weird. But maybe I'm old enough now. I mean, lots of, lots of stuff. It's, gets better when you get old. All about that stinky cheese. Not quite yet, but it's getting better every day. It's 2024, Adblock exists. You could use Adblock if you're having a problem with the ads. You can also get YouTube Premium, which everyone will just hate on me, but I would I would tell my friends this, even if I wasn't on YouTube, which there will be people that can never see past it. Anyway, so because it's on YouTube. But you can, get a, you can get a family pass, like 20 bucks, and I think you're gonna have four or five people on it. Just get four or five heavy YouTube users, your friends and your family, Y'all kick in a few bucks and you'll never see an ad again on YouTube and you can download stuff and you, there's a few other perks too, but I don't know. I, I'm, as I've gotten older, so let me be clear when I was 15 and broke, my thought process was not this when I was 22 and broke, my thought process was not like this. As I started making a more livable wage, I saw the value and especially as I had businesses that failed, I've had businesses that failed before according to co-op. I see the value in when I get value out of something, I do not mind putting value into something. And so YouTube for me, uh, when I'm looking up how to uh, jumpstart my lawnmower, if I don't have to watch an ad, that has some value. Now, would I say that it's got $20 in value to me every month? No, probably not. But between, I think it's like me, my wife, and two other family members, yeah, it kind of does have that value. Now, if you're making a choice between, am I going to get Netflix or am I going to get YouTube premium? Like, well, you're going to get Netflix. Let's be real, right? But if you kind of get to that point where you can afford both, it is a great luxury that I do enjoy that I I have had it for like five years now. And uh, I find even some people in the company where they, I, I don't need it. 
And once they try it, though, they're like, wow, this is amazing. Like, YouTube without ads is amazing. It is. Like, you just click and you're watching. Oh, click on the next watching. Never disruption. It is great. But the platform can't exist. And uh, I can't get on here and dance like a monkey. Because it costs them money. That's the reality of it is, you know, to host this thing, they don't make money off unless there's ads somewhere. So if nobody ever watches ads ever, this thing can't work. But, uh, you know. Luckily, if you use YouTube Premium, it pays for it. If you watch any of the ads, it pays for it. If you super chat, it pays for it. If you're a member, it pays for it. If you buy anything on there, it pays for it. Pretty much that. So most of you are participating in some way. Uh, that's beneficial to the platform. And, uh, you know, they, they know you're all different demographics. If you're if you're 12 years old, they know. They're like, yeah, don't you're never going to sign up for YouTube TV. I've never signed up for YouTube TV. I haven't had cable in... 20 plus years so what business did i do before aquarium co-op i ran a so when i was young i was into magic the gathering playing cards a lot i was what they call a magic dealer i would buy and trade and sell at big events all the time i also participated on a team and would compete we would all fly together there we would split all the winnings from the top eight all that kind of stuff. That was a pretty good business um, as an entrepreneur. And then I thought, you know what? I went to school for network administration. I'm going to fix people's computers. And so I opened up a business called My Computer Guy. And uh, that totally was okay so long as I didn't have to talk to people because it was like nails on a chalkboard when people would just like continually reinfect their computer with spyware from porn and then be like, $40 to fix it. And so I had my own retail location and uh, then to make ends meet. So I was putting door knockers up. I was getting people coming in. I was barely making it. And then I started selling stuff uh, on eBay for people. And that was a nightmare because <laughs> I would only get 10% of it and all that. And eventually I closed that business down. Terrible. Then uh, I basically worked for a card store for a while, worked at Costco as a sample person for a while. Then I worked at uh, Lynn Care Delivering Auction, setting up people on uh, both CPAPs and BiPAPs and oxygen concentrators. And then I worked at a fish store for three months. Well, actually, I got hired on to work at a grocery store, which I thought was going to be awesome because I did like people, um, but they never had any hours for me. So I was I was working at a at a pet store. For store credit i was like well until they once they put me on the hours i'm going but i got nothing to do so i may as well work here and you'll give me store credit and i like fish and then they eventually just ne they literally never gave me hours even though they gave me the the clothing and all the stuff i had to wear and i did all the orientation they just never never gave me hours and uh i just ended up after three months started working there for for money and that's that's how i ended up running a fish store and then eventually people were asking me like why not run your own fish store fool and after a couple of years of thinking they were crazy, my business partner finally talked me into it, and we did. And now, basically, 11 years later, we're Aquarium Co-op. So, yeah, some failures in the past before success. Learn a lot. You learn a lot when you fail. When you fail with your own money and you have to admit to your family and, and you know, like, I'm going to start a fish business. Everybody thought I was insane. And they try to talk me out of it. Like, how about you just get a nice job? How about you do the real thing? And uh, luckily it worked out. Because it totally could have not worked out. Had more of a chance to not work out. And my family would have been like, see? Told you, fool. But it worked. Uh, I mean, I do like people. I just find it very frustrating to help people with computers. If, you, if you've never attended, um, like computer classes that are required by like a community college for network administration day one is literally like this is oh it's uh, uh, this is a mouse you have a left button and you have a right button and you're like watching people use two hands like move it on the screen of like oh this is so hard and you're and that's kind of when i learned i was like wait these people actually have jobs at a company and I'm going to be helping these people. I don't know that I can I can harness the frustration and hide it well enough 
I'm not sure this is going to work out. So that's when I was like, okay, I'll do my own thing, fix people's computers. But turns out it's just those people handing you money and not knowing what the outcome should be. Like, but it's $40. How come it, it don't do the thing? Like, well, you have a graphics card from before electricity was invented. You, you need to buy a new one. Well, how much is that going to cost? Well, you know, for the game you want to play, it's 180 bucks. What? You know, and then, oh, you want more RAM? You're maxed out. What do you mean? Like, this had no idea. And so it was, it was never meant to be. <laughs> now I know d design easy products can't fail. I just need to, oh, that's it. I'm scrapping a quarter co-op. We're going easy computers. Easy computer guy. Do I need ammonia test strips if I already have your multi-test strips? Uh, maybe. If you're on a very tight budget, no. If your tank is already like set up and cycled and, and well-established. I do think it's very good to have a set of ammonia testing supplies because people are gonna you're gonna run into a problem someday like, oh i wonder if ammonia is a problem i just don't know now if you have a local store and it's you know five minutes away you can probably get by without it take it to the store we'll measure it for you uh but i like to have them around <laughs> did you reboot yeah i do love it crowd the show have you tried turning it off and on again Uh, let's see here. Try being a customer service rep for computer service. Yeah, I, I, I will say I think the only thing, and I, I, you know, it's, I don't know this for a fact, but I think the only thing harder than being customer service for something like computer or or, or probably Comcast is being customer service for your own company, because it's very hard to remain calm when you're like watching someone destroy your money and your livelihood. And uh, that's actually why one of my first hires was getting customer service team because it was really affecting my mental health. Um, if something went wrong, I would dwell on it for days and weeks and go, well, how can we fix it and make sure this never happens again, even whether it was our fault or not. Um, and it would make me depressed like all the time. And it was starting to affect in, to, in store uh, when I was working in the store. And so... I actually hired people so I could have days off and then uh, much better in a mental healthy spot now. But even now we have mods that uh, clean up posts, you know, daily, like why your teeth suck, why you fat, why do you not know anything about aquariums, all that kind of junk on the daily. Lots of message every day. People will spew and hate. Uh, and you, you, can, you, can brush, you can brush them off, but when they hit you at the wrong time, you know, when you when you you realize I'm gonna take a seventy thousand dollar beating on aquarium heaters, and then someone like, "Why are you so dumb?" and all of that, you just don't need that. You don't need to stack it on. So, uh, by having mods kind of work for us, and, and and a lot of people donate time, whether it's in the chats or the forum or or Facebook group, um, keeping the place kind of run and healthy, and that's why I focus so much on trying to maintain positive experiences because I know when it's not positive, I don't want to participate anymore. I don't, I've got lots of negativity uh, in just in general when things go wrong in business or whatever um, that I want to make sure if I'm going to be a workaholic, I don't want it to be a like stress all the time. So uh, I go out of my way to try and make environments I can hang out in that are not stressful. And I think it's good for a lot of people. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Try working for an ISP and your customer is complaining about slow speeds and using a 10-year-old 10, old, 10 year old PC. Yeah, and then you, you then you get me where I literally like have the world's most advanced PC and uh, the knowledge. And I'm like, just skip skip the step. Confirm MAC address is correct. I know I swapped the modem. Let's let's go. Got to got to I got work to do. Like, did you reset my fiber connection? What is going on? Which is just a different level of frustration for the guy on the guy or gal on the other side. In that case, I'm the know-it-all. In which uh, I don't like I don't I don't like being that guy, and I don't like helping that guy. So I already know. P 
people can be terrible? Yes. Especially if you take their internet away. Woo. My my wife, I love her, but the minute the internet goes down, she she starts cursing the day that we don't have a DVD player. <laughs> we use a DVD player once every nine years, but the minute we don't have internet, it's a life-saving device, apparently. Uh, let's see here. YouTube used to be that environment for me once. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, I think YouTube used to be a little more, I don't know, maybe inspiring. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to call that, but, uh, as YouTube has evolved over the years, definitely there's money in, you know, rage baiting and, and all of that kind of stuff. And I, I don't partake in that, but you know, it's harder and harder to escape. Um... Would it be possible to hold a tank outside where all my excess tank water is used to feed plants? Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a tank. It could be a, like a, you can get an IBC tote or just like a, if you have local bakeries a lot of times, you can get like those blue barrels for like 10 or 15 bucks. Any of those work pretty well. And then you can, not every day you get a chance to use bunghole in the right, uh, in the right, right terminology. You can install a bunghole in that, uh, in that. 55 gallon blue plastic barrel or something like that and then a spigot and you can have a hose and you can go water your garden straight from the bunghole <laughs> a guy and his stuff stuff man never seen you live how are you doing pretty good usually i dread doing the live stream because like oh i gotta i'm gonna do my thing and then about 20 minutes into it i'm having a good old time back back in the hot seat Mostly because I, like, I have to come in from the fish room or something. I'm working on a project. I'm, like, super excited about it. And I have to break away. I hate breaking away when I'm like, ooh, I'm on to something over here. But it's good to get away from stuff. And you come back with fresh perspective, too. So. $5 from Ted's, Ted Strange. You better be a member, Ted. If you're not a member, I, w I wish I could refund you that $5 and just become a member. I don't know if you're a member. But if you're ever going to donate money... At least do a super chat so I can answer your question or become a member. A member is infinitely better, in my opinion, for you, not for me. Well, it's good for better for me, too, technically, but I think it's a better proposition for you guys. Is it normal for zebra danios to have, like, a disease, like a neon tetra can get from suppliers? Uh, not in my experience. Normally, pretty easy to get healthy and, and treatable, and, and uh, a lot of times we buy them in mass quantities, kind of 1,500 or more straight from a, a farm, but, uh, no, I haven't really run into too many, I mean, I, I see, I see more defects with, like, the glow danios, but not just, like, a normal zebra danio, those things, I think they're, I don't know, uh, I don't, not regulated, that's not the right word, I feel like maybe they're kept health, not healthy, that's not the right word either, more genetically diverse just because they're used so much in research. Maybe. Maybe that's why. I think my fish room's looking good. Uh, it'll look better when uh, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm trying to get it cleaned up for keeping fish simple. I've got, I've literally got a hundred pounds of flake food in there. I got to find somewhere to store. I've got all these like middle of the projects. And then I got to, I got to scrub down some algae. I got some fish coming in and I'm going to hide some things just because they, they can't be on camera yet. So, yeah. Should I pick out dead fish or let the ecosystem handle it? Here's my hot take. I don't pull dead fish a lot. In the store, all the time. In, in, in my home, my home aquarium, like let's say I got 200 guppies in there and I'm breeding up a storm and there's one juvenile that died, the snails will polish that thing off overnight. Now, if I had a 10-gallon and I had a yellow lab cichlid that's four inches, die yes it's gonna be too much ammonia for that system but if it's a you know just like a a small like one inch fish in a 50 gallon aquarium i don't really sweat it um and i and i that's one of the reasons i do like snails and shrimp they they literally exist in the ecosystems to break that stuff down so i just let them do it and it happens all the time people go i don't know where that fish went your system just consumed it so if i had a mast off yes you got to get in there uh, or a giant fish, you gotta get in there. If it's a wee little guy, nah, it's probably fine.
Do I have new fish yet from Dan's Fish? No, they ship tomorrow. I spent too much money, but uh, I decided... What? I decided that... Uh, I need to live what I preach, and I believe that basically every fish is too cheap. The fact that we can get a fish from halfway around the world uh, by the species we want. And so... I kind of said to myself, well, if I'm not willing to buy this fish, I'm living a lie. So I bought uh, $50 Tetras, these uh, African like red Congo Tetras. I got six of them, which do that mass so 300 bucks. But they're going to look sweet once they're done coloring up. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Tetras live you know, a long time. So hopefully that investment is going to go well. Uh, and then I bought four of the red-tailed hillstream loaches those things were like 70 bucks each and i i kept watching them sell and i'm like oh but i've bred the bred normal hillstream loaches like three times like in the 800 gallon twice two different tanks and another tank and uh i said you know i got a decent chance of breeding these and then i can bring the price down <clears throat> and get them selling in the retail store and other people start so like okay i'll make this investment hopefully it will uh, pay off and make them cheaper for the whole hobby, you know, in my mind, the way I kind of justify that is, uh, you go, well, you know, we've got the membership. If I spend some of that money and then I breed those things and we can offer them at the store for like 25 bucks, that is reinvesting that money right back into the hobby. So, uh, and then I got some white wizard snails. Like I think I, I think you got three of them for 40 bucks. <clears throat> so they're live bears hoping I can make some more of those and sell them cheap at the store as well. <clears throat> and when we sell them at the store, they start kind of fanning their way out throughout the country. So that's that's my, you know, I, I, I'm i okay at breeding. I can make some stuff happen. And uh, so I have a, you know, and if I can't, I offload stuff on to Dean. And then Dean, between us, we can usually get the stuff going. And uh, then if we can bring that price down, it helps, I think, for the whole hobby. So it's, it's, it's kind of crowdsourcing, you know, but I'm not always successful. And yeah, I spent a stupid amount of money on fish and I'm hoping it pans out. It doesn't always. Uh, let's see here. I level up my knowledge since last time, but cat eight isn't really useful unless you're running enterprise level hardware. Currently, you're paying a premium for not much gain. It's true. Unless you're, uh, well, even then, but when you know let's say you have servers like well like i've got i've got like let's see if this is connected at the moment mm. oh. i just moved this thing oh, it's gonna be so heavy still plugged in i think when you have a when you have multiple servers of hard drives can i pull it no i got a key i got the key to pull it out but multiple servers filled with uh, YouTube footage. Uh, this one, let's see, four drives, eight terabyte. Yeah, do that math, 32 gigs. Or not, yeah, 32 terabytes. Then I've got another NAS over there. Uh, I have found that when you have people remotely pulling in graphics and video and stuff in the company, it does help to eliminate as much bottleneck as you can, even with like uh, Cat 8 cable. That being said, we now do everything in the cloud. Not everything, because it's too expensive to store like 50 terabytes worth of footage on the cloud, but, uh, and we end up, it's, yeah. You, you never think about when you start a company, you're like, I'm gonna end up paying and subsidizing people's internet connections because we're a social media company and the files gotta get downloaded and they gotta get uploaded and they gotta get, you know, changed and they gotta do this, they gotta do that, and, and uh, yeah, so. When can I super chat using Dogecoin? I don't know, but I would allow it. There's going to be a rally in uh, 212 years for Dogecoin. And I'm going to cash in so hard. Because right now, I think uh, this this uh, larger than number two. Wait, this number three Phillips head uh, drill bit is worth more than all the Dogecoin I have put together, I'm pretty sure. But when it rallies... We'll be buying some expensive fish at Dan's Fish. 
Hope the family are well. Love the videos back in the fish room. You're looking good. Much love from Australia. Yep, I had dinner with grandma on Friday night and uh, was a good time. Or her mental faculties are still on the decline. Uh, more and more kind of dementia setting in. Still, still there. Still knows I'm there. Knows who we are. But, uh, you know, she asked, like, was Germany fun? And what did I do? Like, 11 times in, in the span of, like, four hours. So, you know, it's, st it's still very important to me to, s to spend time with my grandma. And, uh, you know, she helped helped raise me at different points in my life. And, uh, you know, we, Katie was nice enough to make her food and, and all of that. So, you know, still, still important. Family is always important. I'm seeing fish tubers promoting BRS Fresh brands like Aqua Illumination LEDs because they probably got it for free. They're expensive. Do you feel the hobby is going in the wrong way? No, I don't feel like the hobby's going in the wrong way. We've all been doing this the whole time. Let's be real. Uh, I don't think it's more pay to play than it, today than it was eight years ago. I think there's... Uh, I think it's getting a little bit more fair in the creator. Like we can demand a little bit more money, but uh, yeah, I mean, there was a sit down meeting where they like when the venture capital, well, the venture capital company still wants to buy a Korean co-op, but they were like, well, how do we work in different ways? Like, how about you sell our lights? We own aqua illumination. I was like, your stuff is crazy expensive and we're launching a light just infinitely better in my opinion. And so we never, we never did that dance, but you know, every company has got to do their, their own thing and do their own learning. I think I'm very interested to see how BRS Fresh, which is bulk resupply, the freshwater side pans out because right now it seems like a train wreck. Uh, you know, they're hiring people like Jeff Sensky, makes a video, gets 412 views, which that is a very gifted aquascaper and he deserves a much better platform and should do better, but people just don't care on that channel. And then you've got MJ aquascaping, getting much more views doing like kind of a top five type of thing. And I just, I don't, at least the way I do business, I got to put my passion and my money behind something and make it work. And from what I see, they've got the money, but they don't have the passion behind that freshwater side. I just, I, I just, I don't see the logic in like, we have six different styles of cancer filter, but not a hang on back or an undergravel or actually I don't even know how those work. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see how stuff like that pans out. I, I, I feel like a lot of brands, they start doing one, they venture over like, well, we're making a light. So like, it'd be like me going, well, we make a light and people buy it. I should probably make a saltwater light because, you know, there's more people out there and they got saltwater tanks too. Except I know that I'm not going to have the right, uh, the right marketing campaign. I'm not going to design a light like all the reefers want. You know, am I, am I targeting fowlers? Am I targeting, you know, reef tanks? Is it hard corals, soft corals, you know, mushrooms? Am I trying to make the colors pop or am I trying to grow them? Am I trying to keep the price point down or am I trying to compete with the black boxes? There's so much to even just think about. And too often it's like, yeah, but new box, slightly different, more money. We, we can make more money. And I just don't think you ever win when you compare it to someone is going, yeah, but I'll put my money and my expertise and my passion into this saltwater light. I'll never be able to compete with them. I don't have that passion for that saltwater. So... You know, I, I I can, you know, bulk resupply and us, we can lean in going, hey, we got a good reputation. They got a good reputation in the saltwater world. We've got a good one in the freshwater world that doesn't pay dividends on the other side, though. So. I finally got some Scleroma Stax Barbados Corridoras. Any tips on breeding them, age and size? Uh, also, have you played any good games lately? Elden Ring is waiting. I haven't played any games. I've been working my butt off. Uh, I've got a few different videos on breeding those Barbados, mostly keep them cool, kind of room temps I find, and once they get about this big and they get that nice golden on the males, uh, and, and a little bit lower pH, I, I kind of say like 7-2 or under, usually they'll start breeding if you're feeding them enough and you're keeping them cool, sometimes a nice cool water change will trigger that spawning, 
<clears throat> but there are uh, some videos you can watch on how I was triggering them and getting them to spawn and raising up some little ones. Dean's been doing it too lately. Uh, any plans to sell into Europe in the future? Yeah. Um, trying to work out some logistics. That's, that's toward, toward the end of this year, I would say. There's a couple projects in between now and then that have to happen before we can really make some stuff. We've got... Um, Got Benete Shrimp Sanctuary is doing a little bit of selling in uh, Asia and Singapore. Just a little bit, trial basis. What's the process of using hormones with breeding quarries? I don't know. I have, I don't have any expertise on that matter. I'm not even sure what hormones you'd use or what they actually would accomplish. Uh, let's see here. How to cure swim bladder disease infection in honey garami. I, I use erythromycin, uh, which is maricin also, and I try to see if it's an internal kind of constipation, bloating issue. It's really hard when it's, you know, like uh, an organ failure type thing. So I, I don't I don't have a I don't have a, a great answer for you. Uh, let's see. Thanks for everything you offer with the memberships more than anyone else for $5 a month. I still want to make it bigger and better. Always. Uh, it's, you know, mostly I'm crippled. I am crippled by there's only 18 hours in the day that I can work. Well, let's be real. Lately I've been taking a little more sleep, which has been good. So, uh, only 16 hours in the day I can work. And I, I do still hold hope to, um, keep adding, just finding more benefits to add to, uh, the memberships. So I don't, I don't like to promise and take away. Like I try to avoid that. Uh, so I look for the right opportunities going, will this scale, right? Uh, let's see here. The red tail hill streams are not swellia from the gastromasum. Uh, I've kept, have been a little harder to keep. All right. Well, I'm in for some learning then. They're on the way, and hopefully, hopefully they just uh, they love my water, and it'll make it easy for me. Are detritus worms and grindle worms the same thing? Do you culture them the same? I've never cultured anything. I'm in the process of trying to grow and start brine shrimp in a mason jar. Uh, we've got some culture videos, like on vinegar eels. We might have some on on some of the worms too, but I don't think those are the exact same. You can, I think you can argue that like what, like white worms and banana worms might be the same, but some of the cultures are different. It gets a little weird. Um, I, I, I think I've only, I don't even, I think I took the video. I don't think I've shared it yet, but I had brine shrimp hatching before I went to Germany and I didn't harvest them. And when I came back, I had adults, like 20 adults in there. <laughs> They're still going. I just want to see how long they'll live in that this brine shrimp hatcher. So now it's like, probably going on week four of these things like just to hatch and breeding or not they're not well they could breed they're probably not happy enough to breed in there they're live bears when they breed uh, but they're still kicking there i haven't fed them anything i kind of want to but at the same time like i kind of still see how long it goes any tips for reducing quarry losses when shipped it doesn't seem to matter who i buy from i experience anywhere from 30 to 60 percent losses quarantine with seeded sponge filter each time hmm I would, uh, I mean, I don't know if you've attempted this, but I would look at the wet spot and Dan's tropical fish or Dan's fish, not tropical fish, the wet spot, tropical fish and Dan's fish. I haven't ordered Corydoras from Dan's fish, but I really like the way he ships. I have, I order Corydoras basically from the wet spot, their wholesale side every week and, uh, don't really have problems. So I can speak to like, well, they've been doing well for me. And if you still have problems ordering from them, then maybe it's like, ooh, it's a water issue. Like maybe your water is radically different than everyone else keeping or something. Uh, any thoughts on non-US memberships? I wondered if you could do memorabilia box of coins if we paid the shipping. Yeah, there, there's definitely some thought on that. Like maybe once a year we open up like, hey, you could, we could like find a way to do that. That is on the, hmm, it's, it's think about that type of thing. Um, uh, part of it is 
the syncing with our website. So like we can't really use a partner. Like we couldn't use like Garnelio in, in Germany to do that. Cause like, well, we don't have the code to sync your account there. So we, we have been thinking about that. And I, it is on my mind of like, I do want to get that stuff to you guys. It's I, you know, I officially you'll never get it unofficially. I'd love to see you get it. Uh, I just don't want to promise to not deliver. So I'd rather say you're never getting anything. And then someday you will sweet. I got something. Uh, let's see. That co-op light is growing around five pounds of Brazilian penny wart and 10 six inch Amazon <laughs> sword runners every week. It's magical. That's right. If you just you find a way to sell those, it pays for itself. Our light, I mean, I I've it's on I have two different light videos at least to make on my videos to make list and uh you know, I, I believe our light is too powerful for most aquariums. I believe most lights are too powerful for most aquariums with the way people run them. Uh, I, I really would love to see us change the hobby from, I have an aquarium, I need a light, post in a group, will this light do a thing? And then people go, yeah, that light does things. And the other person goes, no, it doesn't do things. This light does things. And then that, and I like this light better. And try to quantify it in... Like a, you, we used to have, I think, fairly good systems 15 years ago of how many watts per gallon are we using T5, are we using T8s, are we using T12s, are we using high output? We had, are we using power compact? We had these little systems built in, and now it's kind of the wild west of like, we try to use wattage, but depending on the, the reflectors on the LEDs and how hot they're running and how fast they're going to burn out and how fast they degrade. And then the power supplies, how good or bad quality are they, you know, and then water resistant. There's all these little factors that go into a light. And uh, I do believe we make an exceptional light for the money. It is a more expensive light uh, than budget lights on Amazon. But I think long term, when you compare what you get for it, the warranty, the quality of light, the color of light, even I like, um, and then that most people have success. You can have success with even just a shop light, like the, some of the most basic lights on the planet, you can have plenty of success. There's no doubt, but you know, it, it's like if I go play, uh, a professional tennis player, they can use any racket. They can go find one out of the dumpster and they'll destroy me. But, uh, I'm more likely to play better if I don't use that dumpster racket and I have like, oh, this thing has all the strings and they're they're, they're taut and okay, I can I can return the ball. Like, well, I'm not going to return the ball. They're going to serve it. I would never hit it. But, you know, I do think when we're investing money, one of the biggest hurdles we have in the aquatics arena for everybody is investing in the right place. And it starts from everybody gets a new aquarium and then they have stress coat, prime, uh, Complete and uh, Fritzheim and uh, Tetra Total Care, you know, and they're they're seventy dollars deep into chemicals. And they only need one of those bottles, really. And if they had taken the other fifty bucks and put it towards a better light or a better filter or better substrate or more plants or whatever, and we end up towards the end, I find lighting is usually one of the end purchases for someone who doesn't have twelve aquariums already. They they buy the aquarium, they get some plants, they get all the things, they got some fish, the plants aren't doing so well, they get a fertilizer, that fertilizer kind of sucks, they get another fertilizer, hey, they're starting to have some success, they're asking more questions, oh, they don't quite have enough light because they just had a kit light, okay, I need to buy another light, I'll buy this $30 light off Amazon, okay, it's doing better than it was, and eventually you get to a point where either A, you are a plant wizard and you can just do whatever you want, or B, you go, okay, I'm just going to start buying better quality stuff and get better results and maybe buy a Fluval light or a Phoenix light or R light. Um, and I find that a lot of times if people kind of skip to like our light, you can know you have, will have enough light. You can dim it down. You can learn with it and you won't have to go from the kit light and then the next step light and then a light that'll last you many, many years. Um, so I think it's better for the environment a little bit, especially if you're, you know, buying a dollar a gallon sale tank at Petco instead of buying like a kit. Like, well, I can't buy the kit. And they come with some LEDs, but the LEDs are brutal bad. And, it, you know, well, then I'm going to buy some glass tops and this and that. But you end up with equipment that lasts a lot longer, in my opinion. 
though. Uh, what kind of bamboo to put in your aquarium? Well, you can buy the, you know, kind of the bamboo, uh, lucky bamboo. You just gotta make sure the leaves are out of the water. And so if you can't find long ones, what you can do is get a piece of styrofoam, poke a hole, put the bamboo through it and float it. And the roots start growing in and eventually it gets longer and longer and longer and longer. And you can kind of keep scotching it down and the roots will be in the gravel and the leaves will be outside and you'll have a wonderful forest. Bought high-end heaters, and they all, after a couple months, tried boiling my water or my tanks one by one. Yeah, now that I'm out of the heater game, let me give you my advice. Use less wattage. All the people that want 300 watt, 200 watt, 500 watt heaters, from all of our testing, adding more heat only increases the failure rate. You know, th think about the likelihood of something going catastrophic wrong when you're like, yeah, I'm going to keep putting my oven on the clean cycle. Like, let's let's turn that to on fire mode. And uh, you're, you're warming up all the contacts, all the wiring, all that stuff. The less wattage you can use, the longer your components are going to last in general, right? Uh, so my, my advice would be less on and off cycles less wattage in general, trap in as much heat as you can with good tops, make sure you're using your passive heating, your light will add passive heat, your power heads, your canister filters, your hang on backs, uh, even your air that you're injecting in, all that stuff plays small roles. And if you only got to bring it from, oh, 66 in my house to 76 for your fish to be happy, a lot of times you can do that without even having a heater. But if you did have to have a heater, oh, you can have a very small heater and just get it up that little extra way and that's why i only ever launched up to 100 watts because i honestly don't believe there's so few people that actually need more than 100 watts and there are people that fight me to the death no i need more like yeah i know and then but i know that i could set up their same aquarium system with less it's all preference like oh i don't like running tops i don't like doing this i don't like doing that i get it but what is needed or what you have to have and what you prefer are two different things Take my advice, set the HVAC to 77 degrees in the house. You don't need any heaters. Well, that's true. I find 77 to be too warm. I, I find the sweet spot in my fish room is setting it to about somewhere between 72 and 74. Um, is the difference between I can go out there and work in sweatpants or, ooh, I got I to gotta wear shorts. Uh, you hit 78, this is real warm. Same in the fish room. Or I mean in the fish store, sorry. I was going to buy heaters when my budget refills. Slew ball it is then. I'll, I'll say that they have a high failure rate too. But the problem is every heater you ask me would be like, oh yeah, that, that thing has a high failure rate also. <laughs> so get an inkbird controller, some kind of controller. I mean, honestly, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, my, maybe I pivot and I got to try to teach more people on how to set up aquariums not using heaters. Like if like so if you go to Chris Lukup's channel and you look at all his nano tanks and everything, he doesn't run a single heater in the entire house. Like he heats his house, but not a single aquarium runs a heater. So many like advanced breeder, just all these places. When you go to the wild, it's pretty darn cold in a lot of the water. And we as hobbyists, we just it's so easy to be like, yeah, 78 degrees makes them most happy. But the reality is fish on average, are actually happier not being stuck in breeding mode. And it's like angelfish. Angelfish are always beating on each other and breeding every day because they're keeping at 78 degrees. You keep them at 72, they're just chilling. They're eating, putting on the winter fat, going, hey, all right, it's going to heat up. Eventually be summer. Your house will be a little warmer, and they, they make some babies. Not every fish is that way. There's always going to be some exceptions, but by and large, there's a lot of stuff that just goes like, is it within a range where a human is comfortable, we'll be just fine. Okie dokie. I saw your light on your on a friend's tank. So jealous at 100%. It's a street light. <laughs> I used it at 50%. Yeah, well, I wanted to make sure it was super bright just so people didn't poo-poo it of like, it's not bright enough. Meanwhile, knowing that people are using massive amounts of light and... Really, I like using lower light 
to accomplish my goal. It slows things down. Um, so I, but it's like a new toy, you know, it's like you buy a sports car. I want to drive it fast. And eventually after three months, you're like, well, you know, you don't get real fast. You're going to get pulled over and you're going to drive like an idiot all the time, but you could if you wanted to. And that's good enough. Is there anybody out there that uses a dehumidifier in their fish room? Wait, dehumidifier in their fish room in a normal house situation with drywall and trim? If so, which one works best for you? All of my fish rooms and most people I know have used dehumidifiers. Uh, my biggest recommendation is pick one with the most pints per day to pull out that you can afford and one that has a built-in pump to pump the water out for you. So you can run a nice little tiny uh, like uh, refrigerator line all the way to a sink somewhere and you'll never it'll never stop it'll heat your fish room it'll keep it nice and dry in there it'll prevent the mold it's somewhere between 200 and 300 bucks yeah did i ever find a use for the giant sponge filter i brought back from china no and I actually i need to I need to harass them when i was in china they didn't really believe me but i really want uh giant sponge filter easy flows made and I want to like give them to our stores <laughs> so they can just have this giant ridiculous prop. But they thought I was joking and and we had to keep like not joking. And they're like, uh, but they're kind of expensive. I'm like, I know. We need these. These are these are worth it. <laughs> like they're not they're like they're, you know they're basically kept saying like they're too big to use. And I'm like, oh I know. They're for props though. They're not uh you know, they're not like no one's going to use them, use them. They're just there to look cool. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, if you, you want to know about the heater game, you got to watch the beginning of it. The TLDR is, uh, in my opinion, our heaters had the least amount of defects on the market, but uh, still too many. And because we're popular... Lots of people were losing confidence in us as a company. They, like, and even in the, the Facebook group where we posted, like, I just joined, and now I see this big thread about the heaters. I'm worried about this company. And it's like, you know, whether you do the right thing or the wrong thing, you're always going to catch some flack, but we don't want to catch flack for doing, you know, if one, even if one of a hundred, if one of a hundred goes out and someone posts about it on social media, that happens every day for us. And so, uh, that doesn't happen so much as like, where would you even go to post one if like your Eheim here goes out? Like, is there an Eheim forum? No. Can you go like pick a forum or a Facebook group and like, yeah, my heater went out. And those people are like, oh yeah, well, Eheim, you know, the, the Eheim Jaeger heaters are amazing. They were 20 years ago. They were bulletproof 20 years ago. From someone who sold them in a professional manner, I will tell you, they were not good. Like, we, we used to sell them in store like six years ago. The amount, the amount of headache they are. And I realize half the chat, back, I use them. They don't, you're not part of like that 12% that it just, it's just an, an odds thing. When you sell hundreds and hundreds of heaters, you see the outliers. When you use six heaters, you can go a whole lifetime and never see it. So that's just, it, it's a hard thing until you're, especially as you're seeing thousands and thousands of units sold. That's when you can really start going, hey, this is a defect rate. And then you can measure like, oh, when they're having wrong, you know, a bad run, like, hey, we're up to 17%. You know, that, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Twin Cities Guppies, sign me up for one mega sponge filter with an easy flow kit. That's right. I mean, you have to build a shrine to it. It's got to have like spotlights on it and, and all of that, but... Uh, you know, it'll be cool. Uh, let's see. I don't know, guys. I'm pretty indoctrinated in aquarium co-op. I'm still buying a couple of heaters if they're still available at April's Aquarium. I, I mean, we're still using them. I just, it, I, I still think it's a good heater. But it's not, we can't tank our public relations thing over it. And it's better to, like, go back to the drawing board and, and all of that. So, and there, there are people that did have problems. And to the best of my knowledge, we've made right every single one of them that someone has actually contacted us with. And we've even tracked down people that are like, I don't want to bother you. I don't like knowing that we owe people money or we've done them wrong in some way. And so I will go out of my way 
to give your money back or make it right somehow because I don't ever want that coming up like eight years down the road. Like, yeah, never took care of me on that heater. Like, hey, we will. We do. That is who we are. Like, for for as dumb as I am and as bad as I keep aquariums, I will at least make it right. We will always do that. Uh, let's see here. I'm really interested in the circadian rhythms of fish and how light and temp affect that. I was talking with Chris Lukup about that and how uh, Dean and I have had some long conversations about night lights and replicating the moon uh, in our fish rooms. And I've experimented with it. I've got some LED signs that I use a little bit in my fish room. And we, uh, Chris and I were talking, and I think he came with the idea of like, it'd be really cool if we could just literally replicate the moon. And then I was on Amazon and they make these lights that are basically the moon. Let me see if I can find one for you. Like uh, moon LED light. And they're, they're kind of big. Let me find the ones I was talking about. They actually, they mount on the wall. And because I was explaining to him like, yeah, we... In my past fish rooms and everything, like we go out of our way to make sure we have a night light somewhere in the room because it's never completely dark. I mean, okay, sometimes, but the stars, there's usually a little bit of light source for fish. And especially in our homes when we're walking, uh, you know, into the room at different times and all that kind of stuff, like you don't want to startle them. So if you can provide a night light. Uh, it, in my opinion, it does wonders. Now, not so much light where you're creating algae, like just a far off distant light is what you kind of want. Uh, let me find this thing. It was super cool. I'm looking for it. All right. Yeah. Like uh, that one. I'm always sketched out. If I'm on Amazon, it's not shipping prime and sold by Amazon. This day and age, like it is so hard to find something that's not like, I don't know, brand name QQ24694. Like, oh, yeah, that sounds real legit. Uh, like this one. This one right here would be pretty good. <laughs> Although, the name of this, the, the brand name, Q-I-Y-I-M-E-I-L Lux. <laughs> Rolls off the tongue. Uh, but this thing, it's a dimmable, you know, it's 100 bucks, and it mounts to your wall. I'm going to link it in the chat. Here, I'm going to link it right here. Boom. That big old... The link is longer than 255 characters. I can't even link it. Oh, come on. Is there a way I can shorten this link? Do I have that capability? Mm. All right. Type this thing. Type this into Amazon if you actually care. It'll be in the chat. Uh, right here. Back this out. You got to type that in. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even get rid of all the thing. Hold on. I'm I'm extra bad at my job today. There we go. Type in that. You can see this big old thing. I kinda wanna get one from here because they're kind of cool anyway. And uh I am thinking about mounting one in the fish room as well. So that it's actually a true statement. We were talking about that, and I think it's a cool feature. Let me get the chat back. Where'd it go? We're back. Gotta pop this chat out. All right. Uh, where did that comment go? Brian, or best shrimp safe, Goodyead. Wait, Goodyead to colony breed in a 10 gallon? I don't think that exists. Most Goodyeads kind of get too big for a 10 gallon, and they're a little bit feisty. Let me make sure that's true. I can't think of one that I'm like, you're going to have great success with that. So I wouldn't. Would I ever make a pendant light? Uh, maybe if the price is right, like if it's Kessel priced, no, uh, our manufacturer does do a little bit of pendant lights. We're working on a little bit of other stuff, more like nano weird bowl, small tank stuff. Um, yeah, I, I, I try to, I try to keep the price manageable, you know, like Kessel, it's like an extra 50 bucks just a thing to mount it. Like, oh, this light's expensive. Oh, that's a fifty dollar mount. That's dumb. And I'm always, I'm, I'm always working on trying to upgrade stuff too. Like, we're, we're trying to see can we find an easy, uh, an easy way to build in a 
a timer with a memory for our lights, the hardest thing is the easy part. Lots of stuff exists. Like if you if you bought any low end lights, you're like, here's the manual. I read it six times. Ah, this thing's still a bear. And then you like lose power and it loses it all. Have I tested the CHA scuba heaters? No. Uh, and to be fair, I just kind of hate CHA as a brand because they did me dirty when I was first opening up with cancer filters and uh, shark filters that were rusty and would leak and ruin people's houses. But I will say, as a, as a person that already hates on that brand, which, to be fair, they like anything, they probably do some stuff fine. I am just, I'm grumpy. Uh, a lot of people say that they have found the chip version of it to be just ridiculous, which I called that in my mind when I saw that. I was like, that is a nightmare for customer service. Like, trying to get people to use that technology with the phone to change it, like, that is a nightmare. The fact that it has to be out of water, you can't put it down too far. Like, there's a million little things that make that. My my number one check that I always do when I'm working on a product or anybody releases a product, I go, but how did you make it better? And that is not a feature I think made it better. No one was going, you know what I need? I need to be within 18 inches of this heater, and I need that thing to have to be above water so that I could change it. When everyone's just going, but you could, you, you could just, hit hit the thing like hey I, I changed it like it didn't you know it's like i don't i don't need off the top of my head i don't need two-factor authentication to to use my aquarium heater like that's just not a thing you know be like it's safer now though hey um and so you see a lot of people kind of complain about that but here's here's the big thing anybody can claim a five-year warranty we could do it the thing is like, and I, I, let me, I want to make sure this is correct before I, before I, I'm calling them out for it. Uh, let's see, CJ, uh, heater, scuba heater, scuba heater. When you look at the warranty, it used to be all their product, and this drove me nuts too with their warranties. The warranty was only if you like bought it from a physical store and registered online and let them spam the crap out of you. Otherwise, you only got like a two or three year warranty. Uh, let's see. Where can I find warranty? And I, I think I looked it up when it first came out. And I was like, yeah, they're still kind of doing their thing. Uh, CJ five year warranty. Product registration. Let's see here. Yeah, you have to submit a barcode and all that. Mm. And my thing is this: like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna offer a warranty, make it easy. All of our warranties, all we do is like, hey, your thing's broken. Prove it in some way, like a little video, like that thing's broken. Good, we're, we're making it right, and not like Fluval. It's like, oh, that thing's broken. We'll issue an RMA in like five days, and then we'll ship it, and it'll be there in like three weeks. Meanwhile your plants have died because you have light or the heater, you know, you don't have a heater. Like it just, I really wish if you're going to, if you're going to offer a thing, you know, like, Oh, we have a 700 year warranty. You just have to be a, you know, one legged pirate from Mexico that uh, speaks 32 languages and is 26 years old and seven days. Exactly. Like you can't make it difficult. You gotta make it super easy. Like, yep. Okay. I got to find this technicality here because it's going to drive me nuts if I don't find it. And I'm going to look like I'm just spreading rumors. And they could have changed. All right. Oh, it says five years, but not clicky on the bulk resupply website. I'm looking to see if anyone else is confirming it while I'm searching the depths of the internet. Uh, CJ warranty registration. <laughs> CJ scuba heater, scuba heater. <laughs> five, here we go. Yep. Okay. So on their website, it says five year guarantee. And then in smaller things, says three plus a two year online registration. So if you just go to your store and you buy it and you don't register this thing on their website with them so they can spam you with crap. You only get three years. And so often people don't do that. And when you think through it, you waddle up to your store and you buy one and you're happy and it works and then it breaks. 
and it's been three years and you go back to your store and they go, oh, sorry, you had to register that online. We don't handle that. You got to do that online. You're just going to be irritated. But we won't see any of that for three more years because it just came out. But that's, I don't know. I, I just, we don't warranty things for five years, but when we do, we're going to make it easy, right? And uh, it's also, I don't know. It's, I find it hard to put big, long warranties on things that haven't been out that long. Like I, yes, maybe they've been testing this thing for 42 years. They haven't. Like these companies don't do that. Cause you see the stuff they it pops up at like the Chinese international pet show. And you're like, Hey, look, they have this technology. And then you'll see seven brands the next year that have it. There's no way they tested it for five years to know how long it's even going to last. What everybody does. Well, I shouldn't say everybody, what a lot of people, a lot of companies do. They just ask the supplier. And what do you think the supplier said? How long does this thing last? Mm, long time. The last five years, uh, yeah, you're buying a lot. Oh, definitely then, yeah, uh-huh, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. You'll buy a lot of them. You, yeah, this thing's great. Like, it, that's, the manufacturer going to be like, well, you know, pretty squirrely, actually. I wouldn't buy this. Like, they literally, you know, they'll tell you whatever they want to hear. At least that's what we find. You're like, so the good manufacturers will, will ask the right question. How long do you want it to last? That's when you actually know you're kind of, now we're, we're getting true talk. Because when they ask you that question, they're going, that's a roundabout way of saying, what's the price point? We can make this thing last a really long time. It'll be real expensive. How long do you want it to last? And so that's when you kind of know, like, okay, we're talking with someone that actually is not just saying what we want to hear. They're asking the right questions of where do we want to go with this thing? So. Have I seen the Fluval Bio CO2 Pro? Looks like a really well-made canister of snake oil. I don't think it's snake oil. It's from what I know, it's it's just the same old concept of making your own DIY kind of yeast and sugar type concoction that will produce CO2. The canister actually looks pretty cool, and I think will hold up. Uh, that being said, do you need it? I don't know. I, I think most people, it's fun to play with. After six or eight months, you go, this is kind of a pain in the butt. And then you either move to a real system or you just drop CO2 altogether. So... I think it's in that niche of a weird, uh, you know, that weird product cycle. I, I, everybody's been doing, like for the last three years at all the shows, it's this acid plus this thing makes CO2 and it's cheap. Zis was trying to do it. Lots of vendors are trying to do it. it. But at the end, it's still like, yeah, but you have these high pressure systems with these chemicals that are kind of not great to be working with. And... They don't remain super consistent. Well, this one's got this dude adding this dude adding. They're they're putting all this energy to try and make it not suck, basically. And the answer is like, well, if you really just want consistent CO two, just do like a real. Well, it's expensive, right? So I I I mean I think I'll spend my time showing you guys how to do maybe some more passive CO two methods. Uh, the fact that my tanks pearl even without injecting co2 i just use a sponge filter or an air stone you guys can see that happen um yeah but you know a lot of stuff everyone likes to play with stuff me myself included so if flu ball send me, sends me all this i'll probably play with it i'm not gonna go my way to buy it though because i'm like yeah i think it's kind of like the other stuff but i don't know i haven't tested it maybe it's the best thing ever Let's see here. Ecotech and the AI make moonlight that are programmable to moon. Wait, to the moonlight, even down to the certain location of coral spawning. Yep, there are some some real real cool systems out there. Um, for me, it's always how much money does that cost? A lot of that, like those AI prime lights and stuff. There's a lot of stuff that's just like I don't know. Like, even I think our lights are expensive, but they last a long time. And I know I put more money into them to make them more quality. I can't know that with other people's lights. And I just, half of the reason I think we're successful is I just go, is that going to suck as a customer? Yeah, let's not do that. You know, like, let's say you order a Kessel light and you're like, I got this pendant light. It's going to be dope. And then you're like, wait, is just the light? You don't get the thing to mount it? Oh, that's another 50 bucks? You're already not not happy. You know, it'd be like going to a restaurant, like, I'm going to order steak. And you order it, and it was $52. And you get it, and you're like, 
Oh, you you wanted a fork and a knife? That's that's twenty two fifty. You can eat with your hands. You know, like you just when you break that assumption of what you're gonna get, it doesn't it never makes sense. And when you're trying to keep the prices low, and I'm like, that is only burning bridges with customers. Uh, let's see here. I got to place an order soon from the milestone coin. Do it. Ever have to tell someone not to submerge air, the, the mini air pump? Every air pump. We, we. Whenever you see something like bolded or added to our descriptions where you're like, that seems weird. That literally comes out of a customer service meeting of like customer super pissed. Put air pump in water, didn't make air pump. Or trip their breaker. Or we have we, we literally have people that we, we we literally have people that buy cherry shrimp stickers and then are pissed when they're not live cherry shrimp that show up at their door. We have people that buy air stones. They drop the air stone in the aquarium. They take the picture. They email customer service. What do? Not making air. All of this stuff happens all the time. It's a scale. One out of a thousand people is just that nutty. And then we go, yeah, but we have 15,000 people a month. So 15 people a month are just like, oh, oh, you, 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 oh, that's what you think. All right. We got to, we got to try and prevent that in the future. Okay. You know, like it's, it's on a level. You're just like, that's. You know, and, and, and it circles around the company a little bit of like, oh, okay, let's, and it, it, it proves a good reminder. The, the best thing we can do is like, we target people that are new to the hobby. What we take for granted is common knowledge is not common knowledge. You don't know things until you know things. You would think a sticker is not going to be a live shrimp. That one, I'm like, okay, I don't got a lot of, I don't got a lot of sympathy for that one. But an air stone, not making air, you might not know that. There's some like there's some tablets, there's some stuff that kind of does some stuff. It's not completely crazy to think an air pump might be in the water. Maybe you went to a fish store and you saw a power head with a venturi system. And you're like, hey, that's an air pump. You know, so it, it makes you, you know, as a company, we go, okay, that's hilarious, but let's remember this is a customer. They're trying to give us money, trying to do the right thing. And at the end of the day, when that happens, we failed them as a company. We could have, you know, added something in the description, or maybe we needed a reminder, or maybe we need to show them a little better. That's on us. Even one out of a thousand times, it shows one out of a thousand times we can still get a little better. So we try and go out of our way and we add that. I'm pretty sure on air pump, I think we have that disclaimer because we've had it happen. Uh, I think it might only be on. Maybe we only have it on the, the little one. Mm. Yeah, I think it's only the 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 other air pump. Yeah. In bold with asterisks. Cannot be submerged. Can't get wet. This air pump only operates outside of an aquarium. <laughs> but you, you can't know. You, you know, all, all you need is... You know, you got two kids that are sick. You've been up for two weeks straight. Work's crazy. You ordered an air pump and you just didn't think about it. And you did it. Like, stuff happens. You know, and as, as Candy says, we always fix it. Every time that's happened, we have refunded the money or reshipped them another one. Because I, I seriously view that it's our job to reasonably help people get there. Uh, just like it's our, it's, it's everybody's job when you buy something from them to get it to your door. That's their job. So every time I see frozen plants from another company and they're like, oh, you didn't buy a heat pack. It's like, nope, that's on that company, not on you. It is their job to get those plants to you alive. That is not your job to know that you needed a heat pack. You don't know their temperatures. It's not your business. You haven't shipped 40 billion plants a year. That is on them. That is why we include heat packs for free. We do liners for free. We... We know that's what it takes to get success. So when it arrives and it does freeze, we make it right. We don't go, I gotcha. You don't get anything back. We're not refunding the shipping. We're not doing this. We're not doing that. We know everybody expects you hand someone your money 
you're going to get what you expected when you were buying it. Not this gotcha game. Way too many companies playing the gotcha game. We know you might have had to take a day off. We know you might have had to do a thing. We know you were expecting X, Y, Z. And when we don't deliver on that, or we see how, ooh, you expected this, we misrepresented, we make it right, and then we fix it. We go, yep, we didn't say don't put it in water. Let's add that as a description. Let's give them another one. Now they don't put it in water. Now we can say, hey, it said don't put it in water. <coughs> it's worse for quarrels. You pay for overnight shipping and any issues on you and not on the store. I my Here's my recommendation. Don't buy from those people. There will be vendors out there that will realize, I'll just charge more money. If I sell a thousand corals a month and I charge one dollar more per coral, I can spread that risk out. And the expectation from the customer will be what I deliver. That's what we do. You can go buy you can go buy really crappy plants for a dollar ninety nine a piece, and they will show up wadded up and like ace ventured to your house. You get what you pay for. Sometimes you go buy from a company and it's like they're six bucks and they arrive amazing. Because it was in spring. And then you order again in winter. And they arrive horrible. Or summer, arrive horrible. <coughs> Our goal is that they arrive the same way, year round, every year, year after year. But Corey, why don't you sell 10,000 different plants that all sit out of stock? Because we can't standardize that. We want to try and give you the same experience as often as possible. Even with the curveballs. Different weather patterns different carriers that day right we try to get it down and we're down to <clears throat> error rates on plants at the customer level less than one percent it's amazing internally we're about seven percent where we're, we're calling plants going this is, there's a chance it's going to show up and they're not gonna be happy nope not doing that not doing that since the retail store we'll grow it out then we'll sell it yeah all right, I hear the, the stove beep, and I'm pretty sure dinner is ready, and I'm over my two hours, and I'm, I'm ranting. Uh, but I, I strongly believe if a company is not offering the service you want, don't buy from them. Let them know why, and they, they might yell at you. They might say, oh, you're wrong, whatever, and then go find out the vendors who will. There will be vendors that will refund you the shipping. We did. We don't do any more. I mean, as in we don't sell fish, but there will be a vendor out there that will sell you a coral or whatever it is, and they'll make it right. And they'll do a good job. What, what I normally find is the people that will, when they go, you know what? If it doesn't arrive alive, we'll make it right. We'll refund your shipping. We'll do all the things. You know what they do? They try really, really hard not to screw that up. Another great example, custom aquariums. They basically build you a miniature house to go around that aquarium when you buy it. Yeah, it's like a $3,500 aquarium with Stan and all that. But when it arrives, it'll arrive right. And why do they do that? They explain it to me because I go, wow, that seems expensive. You charge a lot for shipping. And they go, you know how much wood we got to use? You know how many sheets of plywood to wrap that thing? And here's why. Because <coughs> when they make a custom aquarium, custom stand, stain it to the color that matches the interior of your house, all your custom specifications, where do you want the holes, what do you want, you know, all that. It's in the build line. They build it, they crate it, they ship it. If it arrives to you a week later and it's broken and they got to make another aquarium, that's three months at the back of the line again. You are going to be angry. So they make everybody basically spend 100 bucks more in lumber, but it arrives correctly every time. Yeah, you got a bunch of lumber you can use to build stuff, but that you will find a vendor for everything. There will be a vendor that will go, you know what? I hear your problem. If we addressed it. You will pay more money for it. But I would rather pay the money and get what I expect every time than guess. <coughs> the Dorkula symbol. Dinner's ready. Stop ranting. That's pretty much my life. <laughs> Except it's said more of like, here, you need to eat. <laughs> my, my number two, Randy, will say that too. Like sometimes we'll be getting heated in our meetings and stuff. Because I'm very passionate. I'm just I'm very dedicated to our customers and and our company and all of that. And sometimes you know it's a polite way of like calm down. Like, have you eaten yet today, Corey? 
And sometimes I haven't, and I'm I'm definitely hangry. And other times I'm like, okay, I need to I need to dial it back, tone it down a notch. So, all right, I'm gonna bang some questions out real quick. Um, I've heard rainbows are easy, and I've had lots of issues. Do they like or hate hard water? They normally prefer hard water. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I thought there was more that I. Oh wait, no, mm, no, I'm, I'm pretty much caught up. All right, I'm gonna call it. Next week, I may or may not be live. Depends if I'm still, like, hanging out with uh, Keeping Fish Simple. Some people said just live stream with them. Maybe in the fish room. I don't like live streaming with a lot of other people. It just makes it hard. It's already hard enough to manage a chat and do all the things. Uh, and then I see it happen too often where things get leaked that aren't supposed to be leaked on live camera. Like, hey, didn't I just see you're working on that product? Like, yep, thanks for telling our competitors on that one. A little bit too soon. Not in production yet. Uh, and I want to spend quality time. I don't want to, you know, it's his trip in America. If they want to go out to dinner and do all of that, I don't want to be like, sorry, you got to go live stream with me. Instead, maybe it's like, yeah, you guys go here. You guys can go out to eat. I'll live stream, or maybe I go eat with them. Uh, we'll see how it goes next Sunday. He'll be here next Sunday. And so I'll be working with them. And then, so maybe it'll be delayed. Oh, at some point I got a plan. We've been trying to think, are we doing some kind of million extravaganza on one hand? I'm worried that it looks like it's just like a cash grab type of thing. So I'm not sure how that looks. On the other hand, I am super grateful we're going to hit a million. That's, you know, that's been a 10-year goal of mine that we're going to hit. It's obviously been coming. It's a real slow ramp up, so you're going to see it happen. It's not like, oh my gosh, came out of nowhere. It's kind of just been ramping up. Uh, but, you know, I'll probably find something to do. I don't know. At least, if anything, we'll live stream at some point. Uh, if I have to miss a week, I'm trying not to. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it shakes out. Uh, but... I appreciate everybody buying from us, supporting us, uh, sticking with us through the rants and the the products and the and all that. And uh, yeah, be nice to somebody this week. Pull them aside. And go, hey, that coat looks pretty good. I like the way your fish swim. And we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Have a good good week. Buy all of our stuff, please. Just buy it all. You know how much easier my job gets and all of our jobs. Well, not Candy's job doesn't get easier. It probably gets harder. But if you just buy all of our stuff makes my job real easy, and I like that. So if you want to see me develop stuff or make new videos and that kind of stuff, the more money you guys spend, pretty much the more I, time I can dedicate to, I don't know, inventing or something. Doing something crazy. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Waiting for the button.